This lecture discusses the p-value approach to hypothesis testing. There are two different approaches to hypothesis testing. The first one is called the critical value approach. In order to draw a conclusion about a hypothesis testing problem, we find a cutoff point based on the significance level. Whether rejecting H0 or not rejecting H0 depends on whether your statistic is larger than or smaller than this cutoff point. The second one is the p-value approach. It calculates a probability to evaluate how likely observation of the value obtained for the test statistic would be if the non-hypothesis is true. Both approaches are important and commonly used. You need to understand both. In this section, we only discuss the p-value approach. Let's look at one example. Jack tells Jane that his average driving distance of a golf ball is 275 yards. Jane does not believe it. It is a hypothesis testing problem. The non-hypothesis is mu equals 275 yards, which is Jack's claim. The alternative hypothesis is mu less than 275 yards, which is Jane's suspicion. Notice that for the non-hypothesis, it usually contains words such as equal. Hence, we put mu equals 275 as the non-hypothesis. Because Jane does not believe Jack's claim, Jack hits 25 drives. The results in yards are shown in the slide. In this problem, the sample size n equals 25, and the sample mean is 264.4 yards. The sample mean is smaller than 275 yards. There are several possible reasons that can lead to the fact that the sample mean is smaller than 20, uh, 275 yards. First, the population mean is indeed smaller than 275 yards. Of course, Jack will not agree on it. Second, it is due to random chance. Although the sample mean is less than 275 yards, there are indeed some distances larger than 275 yards. If Jack hits another 25 drives, it is possible that the sample mean is larger than 275 yards. If we can rule out the possibility of the second scenario, that is, if the mean, if the small sample mean is not due to random chance, we will tend to reject H0 and claim that Jack's mean drive distance of a golf ball is smaller than 275 yards. The logic of the hypothesis test is that if H0 is true, the sample mean distance AX bar should approximately equal 275 yards. If the sample mean driving distance is too much smaller than 275 yards, we would be inclined to reject H0 in favor of alternative. Here, we need to evaluate how likely to, how, how, uh, here we need to evaluate how likely it is to observe a sample with a small sample mean such as 264.4 yards in our example. Assume that Jack's driving distance are normally distributed and that the population standard deviation of all such driving distance is 20 yards. If H9 is true, X bar is normal with mean 275 and a standard deviation 4. This claim follows from the property of the sampling distribution of sample means. Notice that mean of the sample mean equals the population mean. When H9 is true, the population mean is assumed to be 275. The standard deviation of the sample mean is the population standard deviation divided by square root n. Here, 20 divided by square root 25 equals 4. As we have discussed, a small value of x bar supports 
alternative, and uh, a large value of x bar supports H0. We can calculate the z score for x bar, which is x bar minus 275 and uh, divided by 4. Recall that the z score indicates uh, the relative standing of a value. We will evaluate how likely to observe this sample in terms of z scores. In this case, we will reject H0 if it is unlikely to observe such a sample. The probability we want to compute is called a p-value. It is the probability of observing a value of the test statistic z that is as small as or smaller than the value actually observed. Refer to the diagram, smaller than or equal to the test statistic means the area to the left of negative 2.65. Because z follows a standard normal distribution, we can find the shaded area using a standard normal table. It is 0.0040. Or we can say that the p-value is 0.0040. Compare the p-value with the significance level 0.05. The p-value is smaller than 0.05. Therefore, we reject H9 and claim that at 5% significance level, the data provide sufficient evidence to conclude that Jack's mean driving distance is less than his claimed 275 yards. The p-value of a hypothesis test is the probability of getting sample data at least as inconsistent with H9 as supportive of the HA as the sample data actually obtained. We use letter P to denote the p-value. What does it mean? Firstly, the p-value is computed assuming the non-hypothesis is true. Secondly, how to compute p-value depends on alternative hypothesis. If the alternative hypothesis is less than a value, p-value are computed as the probability of less than the test statistic. If the alternative hypothesis is larger than a value, p-value are computed as the probability of larger than the test statistic. To draw a conclusion of the hypothesis testing, we compare the p-value with significance level. If the p-value is less than or equal to the significance level alpha, we reject H0. Otherwise, we do not reject H0. Let's check the one mean z test. For this test, we want to compare the population mean mu with a given constant. The test statistic is z score, or x bar minus mu zero divided by sigma uh, over square root, root n. How to compute p-value depends on the alternative hypothesis. However, notice that the test statistic remains the same no matter what the alternative hypothesis is. When the alternative hypothesis is left-tailed, which is exactly the case of the previous example, the p-value is the probability smaller than the test statistic. When the alternative hypothesis is right-tailed, the p-value is the probability larger than test statistic. When the alternative hypothesis is two-tailed, the p-value is the probability on both tails. We can see that the p-value of a two-tailed test is double the p-value of a one-tailed test. For example, if the test statistic is z equals negative 1.19 and the test is left-tailed. The p-value should be the probability less than negative 1.19. Use the standard normal table, this probability is 0 0.1170, or the p-value is 0 0.1170. If the test statistic is 2.85 and the test is right-tailed, the p-value is the probability larger than 2.85. Use the standard normal table. This probability is 0 0.0022.
if the test statistic is negative 1.71 and the test is two-tailed, the p-value is the probability larger than 1.71 uh, or smaller than negative 1.71. In some books, it says that the p-value is the probability that the absolute value of the test statistic is larger than 1.71. Using the standard normal table, this probability is 0.0872. If we want to apply the p-value approach to hypothesis testing, follow the steps below. First, we need to correctly state the non-alternative hypothesis. Then, decide on the significance level alpha. The value of alpha is usually a convention. In most disciplines, it is 0.05. Then, we need to compute the value of the test statistic. Next, we need to calculate the p-value. If the p-value is less than or equal to the significance level alpha, reject h null. Otherwise, do not reject h null. Last, interpret the result of the uh, uh, hypothesis test. For different hypothesis testing problems, it is possible that we use a different test statistic or calculate p-values in different ways. However, the above general steps always follow. Many researchers do not explicitly refer to significance level. Instead, they simply obtain the p-value and use it, or let the reader use it to assess the strength of the evidence against h null. The following table lists the strength of evidence against h null for different p-values. When p-value is larger than 0.1, there is weak or non-evidence against h null. When the p-value is between 0.05 and 0.1, there is a moderate evidence. When the p-value is, is between 0.01 and 0.05, there is strong evidence against h null. When the p-value is smaller than 0.01, there exists very strong evidence against h null.